Vein care has really been a part of my practice uh, since finishing surgical residency in about 2001. Uh, I knew at that time that I was going to be a vascular surgeon, wanted to be a vascular surgeon, but because I was on active duty with the Navy, there were some service time uh, involved. So when I finished surgical residency, uh, my first assignment was to a ship. Young, healthy population, venous disease, venous malformations, all part of the, the presenting problems on the ship. From there, I went to vascular fellowship, which obviously vein care is some segment of that. And then on to practice at the National Navy Medical Center in Bethesda, which again, an active duty, healthy population with a lot of young, healthy, new families. And as a demographic, it's a population of people that have a lot of venous disease. It's been with me since I started uh, and has always been an interest. Uh, so it made it easy uh, to, to just make this a bigger part of my life. For me, as it always has been, patient care is really a collaborative effort. Um, because of the training, I have information that I can share uh, with the patients, and I have a certain skill set that allows me to do interventions or to provide services that they wouldn't be able to take care of on their own. That said, none of the things that I do from a technical or procedural perspective are gonna have the kind of outcome that either the patient or I would want, unless they're fully informed on the process, what the recovery is like, how to manage the inevitable small questions, worries, problems that come along with any interaction. So bringing them on board early, giving them as much information, and from the point of view of the patient, control, so that they can manage their problems and if they run into something that they're uncomfortable with, if it's outside of their scope of knowledge, that's really what I hope to be able to fill in for them. So that all along the way, we're working through this together. That's really the concept. Over the course of the last you know, 15 or 20 years, I've grown very comfortable with sitting and talking to people trying to get a better understanding of where they're coming from. So that that process of learning from each other and coming up with a good plan uh, is one that I'm comfortable with and that I hope uh, have the ability to make comfortable for the patient. So personal interaction, particularly one-on-one, -on -one, I would say is something that I've grown into over the years and that I enjoy and that I feel is a skill set that serves me and the patients well. Uh, I really feel sharing information with the patients is probably the biggest service that I provide. The technical side of things are important because that helps us achieve our goals. But the thing that gives those procedures durability, the thing that provides patient satisfaction, especially in the world of medicine, is the idea that the patient feels in control. And that's really my goal. And so if I, as a provider, as a surgeon, as a teacher, can give them the tools and information that allows them to be in control of their lives, then I've done a good thing. And I see my role as that. I would say that anytime we sit with the patient, the primary goal of that interaction is to understand why the patient's there and then to agree on a plan for how we can best achieve the goals that we set out for each other. So what I want the patients to know is that I'm on their side and that we share goals and that if I'm unclear on something, I'm trusting them and counting on them to help me better understand them in the same way that they're counting on me to provide what they need in the way of information and service, again, in order to achieve those shared goals. I want them to know that we're there to build a team. And to be honest with you, 
that message would also be the one that I would share with the providers. Because while our skill sets and funds of knowledge may be slightly different, our goals should be shared and they are always centered around the patient. It, the education piece has been a huge part of my life. I was born and grew up in Michigan uh, and then left for the East Coast uh, for college, uh, graduate school, uh, medical school, surgical residency, vascular fellowship. Uh, all of those in larger academic institutions. Uh, I think the biggest transition for me in terms of education was moving from that, you know, sort of academic cloistered environment to uh, a near 10 year practice uh, in vascular surgery and trauma with the Navy. I'd say that really sort of shaped that philosophy of one on one patient communication. Um, you know, when you're dealing with a young, healthy population that views themselves as perfect and healthy and at the top of their game, and when they find that they aren't, um, that can be life changing. And the teaching part of medicine and surgery becomes important. Um, and there's also a certain amount of, and I hate to be in any way too parental, but having kids of my own, empathy is an important part of that. Letting them know that that transition that they're going through from feeling perfect to less than perfect um, is something that they can work through and to be there to support them through that. My education, I can list the places that I've gone to school. Um, I can list the degrees, but I think the most important thing for me um, as a physician, as a surgeon, is sort of the education in working with people as they go through major life changes. Uh, and then the ability to sort of bring that experience, um, you know, to a practice that hopefully won't be quite as dramatic, but still in need of some education, some support. Um, because no matter when, no matter how often uh, people interact with uh, uh, physicians, hospitals, there's always a sense of nervousness because you never really know what's coming. So the human understanding portion of that, I think is the best education that I've gotten. And I can credit, I think my time, you know, in active service dealing with peoples of all types and problems uh, with that particular piece of education. And I've touched on this before, that they can be in control of what's going on with them. And the realization that just like in the rest of their life, there, yes, there are things that you don't control, but there are many things that you do control. And that it's not always a yes or no thing. It's how can I best manage this? And if, and if between myself and whoever I'm sitting with, we can agree on what a good plan is. And if, and if they can feel supported in executing that plan, I think, you know, again, as a partner, I can help them live their best life. And to be honest with you, that's one of the great things about dealing with vein disease, because so many people live with discomfort, uh, swelling, achiness, things that sort of take the edge off of their quality of life, function, and they may not even know why. Uh, and to be able to overcome that and then successfully manage it uh, to the point where they're not thinking about it anymore is a big win, which is part of the reason it's so much fun for me.